What's going on guys, the Inhuman Beatdown, and I'd like to re-welcome or introduce people to the playthrough that is Imadoki no Vampire Bloody Bribe. For those who aren't familiar with this title, it is a Japanese exclusive uh, dating slim, dating sim, slash RPG that actually DW introduced me to uh, quite some time ago before he came to live with me. Uh, it was a very fun game that I actually enjoyed, and they did make a translation for it. Obviously how I played it. <laughs> so, no problems there. And after a while, we decided that we would make it a playthrough, because at that time, TW was a part of my channel. Uh, now it's a little bit harder to get in contact with him, mainly due to the fact that he has life and stuff, and not very stable internet connection and stuff. But that aside, this was definitely a playthrough that we enjoyed immensely. And it really saddened, actually, both of us that we never got to finish it. So, now with Fallout 3 kind of being a, a D-bag towards me, I've decided to actually go back and take it upon myself to finish Imadoki No Vampire Bloody Bride. But, as it is kind of a dating sim, uh, there is an overarching story involved with this game, surprisingly. So, I've decided I'm going to make a little pre-cap recap to get everyone up to speed with the story so far. So, hang on to your seats, everyone. This is a story only Japan could pull off. So, let's jam! Starting off, we are brought into sort of an underworld-type demon area. I don't recall, actually, if it's given a name aside from Demon World or whatever, but we are Fade the youngest of three brothers of the Vampire Tribe. A tribe of demons who are vampires. Yeah. Much like our brothers before us, we are informed that now that we are 15, we must go into the human world and spend three years there to find a woman with what is called the Platinum Aura. Aside from not really telling us what the hell that is, as far as we know, it's some kind of energy source that allowed the Vampire Tribes to rule over demon world or some bullshit like that honestly it really becomes a mute point at some points <laughs> anyways however the key to this is though that in order to obtain the platinum aura the woman must willingly let us suck their blood so we can't just go in for the quick kill unfortunately but we're not alone as our brothers ball ball say we've never learned how to pronounce his name and live yeah, we never learned how to pronounce their names either. I just refer to them as Solid Snake and Pegasus. You'll understand later. <laughs> Anyways, help us out with Lave infor informing us of charm magic able to woo women. Though, as we have been informed, that doesn't work against the Platinum Aura, but it's still good for a quick bite. We are vampires, after all. Bales gives us, uh... Women to command who act as scouts to be able to get information about the women. Inside the human world, it doesn't take us very long to find a woman with a platinum aura. <laughs> Finding it in, literally, the first person that we come across, who is Sarah Kawakami. Who will actually act as our main love interest throughout the series. There are multiple choices, but me and DW actually went down this path because we thought it was the funniest. And I had already completed one of them uh, in my spare time when I first beat the game. Shortly afterwards, we are also introduced to our rival, Jinguji, who is a rich boy and for some reason sounds a lot like Seto Kaiba. Afterwards, we're introduced to a second girl who has the Platinum Aura, known as Erika Gauto, a crazy mad scientist, for lack of a better term, who enjoys experimenting on people or creating random doodads. Continuing on, we learn more about Sarah and to the fact that she's actually a very religious woman, so much so, she lives inside of a church. Yeah, that's not going to be a problem for a character of demonic origins, as it does become so as we actually pass out multiple times while inside of her house due to other things. However, at a, uh, I think it's an athletics thing, we're actually introduced to a third woman was a name I don't remember because honestly we never paid her that much attention uh, but if memory recalls I believe 
I I believe her name was oh god what was it uh uh, I think it's Anna or something like that. She unfortunately has uh, slight condition issues to where she'll pass out. Yeah, that's always fun. Oh, and her cat and dog are probably possessed by the spirit of Lucifer. But that was more or less something we added. Moving on, we're introduced to another character who is vampire hunter Rio, who seeks to rid the world of all monsters. And he, for some reason, looks oddly familiar, though I can't seem to place it for some reason. Moving on, we're actually, we get more story as we interact with the girls more. Nothing real big happens, until mysteriously when Erika and Jinguji decide to go off into an area that apparently has a gateway to the demon world, where demons are pouring out through. Yeah, fun times. However, it's quickly solved by quick wedding, or quick thinking, and, you know, just overall bloodshed. However, shortly afterwards, we have visions of another girl that we've never seen before, and as if almost... as if almost plot related for some reason, that same woman shows up in our school. Yeah. However, we soon forget about her and move on to a ski trip, where Bales tries to help us out more by giving us a quick way to help us out with Sarah. Unfortunately, it doesn't really come to fruition, mostly because we almost freeze to death. Fun times. Later on, however, thanks to uh, Valentine's Day, we also find out that the woman of our dreams, literally, in some sense, Lilica, is also a demon. Yep, and apparently she's known us for quite some time, or at least seen us, and really likes us. Adding a fourth girl to this roster of characters. Yeah, fun times. And she wants us to forget about the plat- or forget about the Platinum Aura, or get the Platinum Aura anyways, and then ditch the girl and get her. Because we're not really obligated to actually be with the woman after we get her blood. Yeah. That's a, <laughs> that's a fun thing. Later on, we're also introduced to another character who we actually think is a whore. And we're not wrong, as her name is Karen or Karen. I don't know. I think we stuck with Karen when it came to pronunciation. We don't mu know much other than her, except she likes to bang and she wants to bang us. <laughs> However, we spend our next uh, vacation time inside of, well, Erica's family's ranch. Doing all sorts of fun activities before also discovering, surprise, Karin is also a demon of the Medusa tribe. So she can turn people to stone. Yeah, this isn't getting weird. Other events happen that are kind of loosely tied into everything, but sort of not. Bales and Live also come down to spend some time with us, causing very awkward things, such as balls hitting on a, our teacher. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. We then prepare for another trip. Trip. I said trip. Trip. Whatever. Trip out into God knows where for whatever reason. Because I don't remember the exact location we went to, but honestly, the location doesn't really matter. It's just another time to spend with uh with our girl unfortunately it's kind of short cut short since bales and live are also there as chaperones which means that one of them wanted to hit on my teacher more let me tell you those lead to some awkward conversations by the way however it's later revealed when uh chinguji goes missing that he is in fact vampire hunter rio though knowing what had caused before or what was caused before, such as with uh, Karin and her zombie-like creatures beforehand, we know how to quickly undo this, and he's brought back all perfectly fine. Except we know he's a vampire hunter. And really, that brings us up to speed with the uh, thing. We're going after Sarah Kawakami, the religious-filled girl. Two other girls are demons. In between, there was sprinkled a nice little handful of sub-heroines, as it's referred to in the guide. 
or as I like to refer to them as Blood Banks, as their sole purpose is to give extra experience for the RPG route. Which have led to some pretty awkward meetings, such as a random sister who locked us in, our ho in her house and wanted to bone us, uh, a really, really young girl that we probably shouldn't have been talking to, luckily nothing happened, and somehow we got experience for that, a random girl that we saved from a monster, and a random student that no one on the internet has been able to find, except I did it because I'm awesome like that. And by awesome like that, I mean I bought the, uh, <laughs> I bought the strategy guide from the internet and actually had it shipped over from Japan. I can't read Japanese, but that didn't stop me from reading pictures. But that's the story of Imadoki no Vampire Bloody Bride so far. I might have left out a bit of pieces and for really all of the hilarious content you're gonna have to rewatch the uh, series but the series is kind of 35 episodes long but I promise you it's a real treat and honestly it's one of my favorites that I've done so far well I'm sad I won't be able to perform it with uh, DW since he was really a good majority of it I do hope to actually finish it off and give it a proper send-off so anyways, until next time guys, I will catch you all later. Asta.